A very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Off the Press. Monday it is here in the city of Lagos. And for those that are in traffic, just be patient. You'll get to your destinations eventually. Thanks for joining us again. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I'm not doing this alone. I have a social commentator with me, Ani Huve Ayeni. Thank you very much Thank for coming you. in. I got it right. Yes, you did. All right. Good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> okay, we'll start with the Punch newspaper. And um, the big one here is on federal, federal government school feeding. Uh, that's it on your screen. Crisis cripple scheme benefiting states lament. I ha it has two riders. Program stopped in October in Benue. Vendors not paid. Federal government yet to start feeding people in Lagos, Quara. And then there's a picture on the front page. Uh, that's it still. Um, reports on November 1 on school where boarding day pupils pray against rainfall. Uh, that's a dilapidated state of the uh, building. It has uh, been renovated to a certain degree, as you can see the new one on the side. To other headlines now, uh, just beneath that photograph, you will see mob bonds truck for crushing six to debt. We also have um, OAU loses third lecturer in 10 days. As you mourns, police arrest four quarters for murder in Lagos. Lagos opens bid for fourth mainland bridge Wednesday. That's some cherry news for a lot of locations. And then at the very top of the paper, you'll see electricity grid collapses eight times, hampers productivity. If you're living in Lagos and in other capital cities, you must have experienced the um, lights out for hours seeming oh, unending. Man. All right, let's, let's uh, bring you in. Uh, there are some other headlines. On the back of the punch, we have a global mega trend and Nigeria's future. Uh, that's something you might want to read. Um, economic statecraft. That seems like a new one uh, from the punch this morning. You might want to take a look at it. But let's get our guest in. Annie, let's start with this big one. School feeding. Crisis, honestly. Vendors being owed. Owed. And that, that's a very big one because these are business men and women. Aside from going on from the business they're also responsible parents at home they also need to feed their children so they bring in so much to get this food supplied to the schools and then they are not paid because then their own families don't have any benefit and so that cripples their effectiveness to supply food to the schools. This is a very big deal for the government and the government flags this all the time. Oh, we are feeding children. Oh, we are feeding children. Behind, behind every success, there's also the back office. Take care of the back office. Make sure these people are being paid. How much is it are they being paid? Food is something we eat every day and we buy it every day and pay money. So how much is it? Is it one million, is it 10 mil billion it is? I'm just giving just an yeah. example. How much is it to pay these vendors? Is it just 10,000, a 5,000, a 20,000? These are very impoverished areas where these people are not being paid. So, what's, what's your general impression about the entire school feeding program? It's been touted, you know, loudly, uh, like you mentioned, but is it impactful? Is it necessary at this point? Shouldn't that funding be used for maybe something, something else. else in the education sector? Would it be better expended? Because of the rate, unfortunately, the rate of poverty that is in the nation, some of these children, that's the only food they eat in a day. So it's, I, I, th I feel that it's a laudable program. It's a, it's a brilliant program. It's a laudable program. And it's a program that addresses a social ill. Some of these parents cannot afford to give these children food. After that food that they've eaten, that's all they eat. When they get home, they could have water and go to bed or just eat bread and go to bed. So it's a, it's a laudable program that I think the government needs to pay more attention into and look at the people that are actually running this program for them. Well, let's see um, other headlines here. Quite as, uh, I had to say, quite a sad commentary if people have to depend on that to survive in this oh, they country. Do. They do. All right, uh, there are some other headlines here. Um, I don't know which one you would want to take on. We have the case of Tinubu Atiku meet at Abuja Airport. Details unknown. I did see a picture. Did you yes, see a picture yes. of them smiling? But apparently there is no story there. There's no story <laughs> there. It's not like, oh, oh, we have, we have a rapport. Let's meet, let's talk. I mean, these were two friends. 
before politics. They know each other and they have, they will have things that they would like to say to one another. That you are in APC, I'm in PDP. I'm in PDP, you are in APC. Does not mean that when we meet tomorrow at an hotel, we cannot have a cup of coffee <laughs> or tea. True. So I think that just, um, it's just a matter of because of what is going on about the court case, about, oh, I won, you, you lost that issue. And because these are two big wigs of the two parties, the APC and PDP, wow, the two of them together, that's something to think about. <laughs> okay, this one will catch a lot of attention. Buhari may sign 2020 budget on Tuesday. They did promise that yes. we'll get the budget this year. Yes. Does this cheer you? Yes, it does. It does. Apparently, he has actually brought a panel on to look at it to prevent the padding, the padding issue. So he's now looking at it. So that's, that's, that's really plausible that that's going to happen. That it happens and we physically see it. My it's father told story. me something many years ago. He said, if anybody promises you money, don't ever believe them until the money is in your hands. Okay. So, well, a, pinch, a, a little bit of uh, doubt yes, there. Yes, Let's yes. see how things Giving play Giving them out. the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Uh, finally, on the punch, uh, the Lagos opening a bid for the fourth mainland uh, bridge. What's your take on that? This ha will begin this on Wednesday. This has been going on for a number of years, and Lagosians have been waiting for this to happen. So we are looking forward to Wednesday. Let's see what happens. That... Uh, Actually, I was actually looking through the papers and I realized that they're getting the private sector involved. So that, now let's see that this happens so it can help us eradicate the, the gridlock of traffic that we have on our Lagos roads. Well, if you don't live in this area, you, you won't understand why we talk about traffic all the time. So nice. uh, let's move on to this day newspaper now. Um, the big one here is lending deposit rates crashing on the back of CBN's OMO policy. That's uh, on the front, OMO policy. That's on the front page. President's Reviews approved 2020 budget. And then at the very top of the paper, you will see um, INEC, APC, can't replace Aquabio for Aquabio rerun. Says time for substitution over. For those that might not be aware, he has stepped out of the race. After all, he has um, a portfolio now yes. and he's busy. Yes. Um, uh, workers strike cuts power supply uh, to 2,828 megawatts. You find details on page 8 of the paper. And if you flip to the back of the paper, you have Shaka Mamodu talking about Nigeria's descent into tyranny. Uh, let's, let me allow you to pick the one you want to talk about right now on this day. Lend, um, the workers' strike that uh, has supply. caught power supply. Now, it's interesting that here we see that it's workers' strike that has caught power supply. And then here we see that the grid actually collapsed seven times. So the issues of power supply, they are not that straightforward because it's either something or no, nothing. Other. What exactly is the problem with the power supply? Let's have just one story, please. Let's just have one story from the ministry that tells us this is actually what happened. Then we are in a good place to understand what we're working with. Mm -hmm. that now, if you say workers strike, you might, the next person living, the person living next to you might walk in Nepal. Why are you guys striking? How come we don't have power? <laughs> and then they now said, oh, the grid collapsed. Oh, that, that is sad that yeah. it collapsed. So, so what is going on with that? Line of Let's have so one line of thought. Them. There are so many schools of thought on that. Okay. that Aquabio. Aquabio issue, politics. You see, these things, are, like I said, these things, it's just not one story. They just one story after another after another. But apparently they're talking about timing now. And I think the people who have been there always want to hold on to power. They have their reasons. But they should remember that you're dealing with human beings here. You're not dealing with a system. No, it's not just a system that affects human beings. So I think they need to, they need to have a clear, a clear definition of what is happening. Now that they cannot return in, there are other people there. But then, because they have played with time, unfortunately, they are now out of time. So we'll see what actually happens from there, because this is just a, um, it's just a put forward. It's nothing concrete yet. All right, um, Vanguard newspaper. Some of the um, issues we've already seen here in mean, yes, these two papers the are here. The bid for the Fort Mellon Bridge is also here. Um, uh, the story about a lecturer, 10 others kidnapped by Boko Haram, beg for freedom as ACF asked FD to review its strategy in negotiations. 
Uh, 36 states, FCT Violet Pension Reform Act, that's uh, the big one for the Vanguard this morning. You'll find details on page 5. And then on the side of it, the border closure is back again. This time it's talking about border closure, not breaching free trade agreement. Uh, if you've been following the news, you might have yes. heard us um, bring you details of that. Dangote Refinery will save Nigeria over $10 billion. That's um, Nigeria's finance minister speaking. Details on page 9 of the paper. Turkish Airline is here on the front page. They're saying they're pledging to use right aircraft this time and bring all our uh, baggage, baggage. Uh, <laughs> back to us. Um, uh, let's see uh, some of the headlines here as well. HIV AIDS cases declining in Lagos or Kwaibom Rivers. That's according to the U.S. Believe or not to believe, that's a different matter yes. altogether. Your quick thoughts on any of these headlines before we move on. HIV AIDS. That's a that's a very delicate place to put on because I I have there's a story of this gentleman who used to work on the HIV AIDS and the number of people that they can deal with at any particular time was the challenge. There are actually more reports now when the US is saying that the there's a decline in it. Well, um, I well, I cannot speak with definite terms, but I can say that. Really and truly, some of these, some of these, some of these figures, some of these figures that I've thrown out there, let's give us proof that that is actually what is happening, because um, you see every day now, and people we have it written in the northern part of Nigeria, you have it written HIV positive, looking for HIV positive wife, HIV positive um, husband, HIV positive children. So people have now learned to live more with it than the fact that they have it. So uh, do, we now have, do we now have people who have HIV AIDS, who have learned to cope with it and live with it, and they have decided not to report it? Fair enough. Fair things to consider there. Um, Want to talk about some uh, other headlines? The, but the border closure by the federal government, looking at it, actually the federal government is saying they are not in breach of the free trade agreement because yeah. the free trade agreement means our border needs to be open for people to go back and forth. But the federal government of Nigeria is saying that that is giving people the opportunity to bring just anything into Nigeria and dump it here and people keep buying. So we cannot keep our borders open just um, open just like that without any controls. There are so many things happening that Nigeria is no longer in control of going through our borders. But they are speaking with specialists from other countries to see that it does not breach the free trade agreement, freedom of movement for trade -ish, for trade matters. Uh, um, I'll just uh, mention this. You might want to go read it up, but um, I won't pick her brains on it. Mm -hmm. uh, the Constitution Amendment, Senate moves to create National Electoral Offences uh, Commission. Um, I want to read up on that one for our electoral process in this country. Uh, we go to the nation. Uh, that's the last paper before we bring in our sports uh, analyst. Um, we have Budget 2020. Lawmakers vote 37 billion naira for renovation, 1 billion naira for constitution review. And then at the top of the paper, we have controversy over Ohio needs a leadership tenor. Lagos open beat for the uh, Fort Mainland Bridge is also there. And uh, please protest a poor retirement pay. Uh, this ties in with this issue of 36 days of city violent pension or reform. Your quick thoughts uh, before we uh, move on. Police, the police pensions. Government, they, they, they're proposing, government should please look into the police pension. After many, many years of service, some of these people are still dying without the pension. The, there's, a, there's a high rate of poverty in Nigeria, unfortunately. So whatever the government can do to kind of um, get the people out of this so that they get their pension after so many years of working, please, that is something that the government needs to really look at. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a plague that is going on all over the country. You hear of police people dying, old ones, young ones, and the young ones who are there are afraid to retire. Because once they retire, there's no more money. Uh, certainly, something needs, needs to be done urgently. Yes. Thank you very much for Thank your time you. this morning on the program. Thank you, Felicity. Hope to Thank see you, you soon. for having me. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, we'll go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll have our in-house sports analyst share her thoughts on the latest headlines. Just stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. We have our in-house sports analyst to take a look at the latest headlines in the sports world. I'm talking about Onoe Boya Destiny. Thank, Thank you very actually much. Actually, Onoe Boya. Okay. Thank you very much. Good Thank morning. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Complete Sports is here. 
Ekong fails Ronaldo test again. That's uh, one of the headlines for you. Uh, Chelsea plots Jan move for New Eagle star Marja. And then we have uh, Balogun, six first EPL game in 12 months. Ronaldo sets new goals record and uh, Ibrahimovic offered deal by serious seaside Monza. Uh, some other headlines here. Uh, De Bruyne stars, that's another one, as uh, Wolf Arsenal crumbled. Uh, that's the game that I uh, played yesterday, that much I'm aware of. And then on the back of the uh, paper, you will see um, other stories, the Transfer Centre. Uh, details of some of those stories are there. Um, I'll just open the field for you. Okay. Which of these stories stands out for you as the biggest today? Definitely, it's the, uh, the Arsenal, Arsenal versus Manchester City. You see, um, Arsenal, they are way behind what we ex expect them to be. Kevin De Bruyne, just, he's not really a striker, he's just a midfielder. But yesterday was a perfect day for him. Seeing that Arsenal, they are, they, definitely they don't have a coach. That's their number one problem right now. And the defenders, they are, not, they are not confident. The midfielders, they are not confident. And even the strikers up front, they are not confident. So De Bruyne just, took, just, saw, us, just saw opportunity to demolish the Arsenal players, their team, their staff, everybody in that, that club, and he took the opportunity, right? So if Arsenal, they don't get something done within the space of one week, I don't think they are going to make the top eight by the end of the season. Okay, which are the stories? Um, yeah, definitely, Cristiano Ronaldo is back in the scoring line. Congratulations to him. Because we've seen, uh, we've not really seen uh, the better side of Ronaldo for almost like two months now, because he's not... Um, there is this issue at, um, uh, at Juventus. The coach is not playing him, he's putting on um, a different player. And he's not, he has not really had that comfortability. We saw him while he was at Real Madrid at the beginning of last season. So now he's coming back to score two goals and also breaking the record of the only player to score in 15 seasons. Congratulations to him. So he's, he's getting back on his track, definitely. So for, Mar for Chelsea trying to sign a, a player, Chelsea, they have not really been... For the past months now, I would say for the past four games they've played on the EPL, they have not really had uh, the momentum that started with at, at the beginning of the season. So they are trying to strengthen their, their forward and their midfield. Definitely, since they've lifted the ban against them, so if they can sign, if they can sign like maybe two or three players in January, hopefully they can maybe make the Champions League next season. But as for now, I think they need a striker. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, Rangers fans hail excellent Aribo. What's that about? Well, Aribo is uh, a place for uh, Rangers in Scotland, and he's a Nigerian who just uh, appeared for uh, for the Spy Goals like uh, three times or twice now, and he has scored in his appearances. So the fans in Nigeria and and, uh, and in Scotland, they really like this guy because he's 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 a, he's a sort of player we see like um, in a culture. He knows how to dribble. He knows how to score. So if Aribo can make a stand in Celtic, definitely he should be able to make a stand in Nigeria. Okay, yeah. what about the transfer stories for you this morning? Uh, Ibrahimovic, I don't think CRC is, um, is the best place for him to be right now. Although he has a lot of friends in, in Moza, but he's a legend. If he's going to play in CRC, definitely he, he, maybe he wants to go to CRC and bring them back. Definitely not the Syria because you still have to play the Syria, the, the Syria to come to the Syria. So for Ibrahimovic, let him just come to, uh, to the Premier League. I think Arsenal, since they are looking for a striker right now and a good player to set them up, I think Ibrahimovic should be a good start for them. Uh, this, what is this about Man City um, line up Rogers as Guardiola replacement? Well, uh, Guardiola is set to... There's actually a rumour going around that he's set to leave Manchester City by the end of this season or next season. He's tried for them. He's won... Uh, Premier Leagues, a lot of troubles for them. And if definitely he wants to leave, and he's not, he's not having a good start right now because, come on, City, they are, they are 14 points behind Liverpool and they are third in the position. And, and, and uh, Leicester City, they are even above them. So he, he, if he feels like this season is not my season, let me just, I've tried for Manchester City. Let me go on to another league or let me go back to Spain, to Barcelona, to coach or to Bayern Munich, where he came from. And Rodgers is coming up to say, I want to lead City into the glory we know them for, for the past four seasons. Definitely, I don't think Rogers can lead Manchester City to the point where Modula has led them. 
I guess that's where we'll pause things thank for this morning. For thank, you thank, you thank you very much for coming much. on the program. Thank you. And of course, thank you for watching. We're back again tomorrow morning with all the latest headlines. Keep a date. For those that we've shared with you, please go to your vendors and get a copy of the paper or go online and read details for yourself. Thanks again. My name is Felicity Zaniki.